Do you ever look at flowers and think, wow, these would make for a cool character design? No. Well, too bad, because today I'm turning flowers into characters. Flowers have probably been used as inspiration for a billion character designs already, but I wanted mine to be special. So I started thinking about a second theme. And what's the opposite of flowers? Technology, big cities, space, basically cyberpunk. So we're turning these flowers into cyberpunk characters. No, I don't mean the game. Starting off with one of my favorite plants, hydrangeas. I started out researching and brainstorming about them to get the ideas flowing. First of all, they look pretty as hell, and some of them can change color depending on the pH of the soil they're grown on. If the soil is more acidic, the flowers will turn blue, while if the soil is more alkaloid, they will actually be pink. And anywhere in between can range from pink to purple to blue. And these colors would make for a nice color scheme later. The fact that hydrangeas usually grow as bushes with these clusters of flowers made me think about nomadic tribes whose deity symbol are hydrangeas. So this guy I'm sketching now is a member of the Hydrangea Nomadic Tribe. I wanted to incorporate actual hydrangeas into his outfit, but also make a more simplified pattern out of the hydrangea petals. Technically they're called sepals, but we don't need to nerd about flowers too much. Unless you want me to. The backstory I thought of for this guy is that his tribe's home planet was destroyed by several species inhabiting it. And the tribe are some of the only survivors because unlike the other species, they could adapt quick enough to endure space travel. They've made it their mission to help other species avoid the disaster they went through by traveling to different planets with their big spaceship to spread their wisdom. The character I'm designing is from said tribe, but actually left the spaceship permanently because he felt he needed some distance to figure out his own place in the world. Maybe he felt like their nomadic way of life wasn't fit for him. That still meant he would need some luggage with him since he doesn't have the spaceship as his permanent home anymore. So I gave him a belt with pockets on it as well as a backpack for his necessities. Hydrangeas kind of look like clusters of butterflies sitting together, which made me think about how the tribe would need to be able to fly if they wanted to quickly cover land on foreign planets. I wanted to give Hydrangea guys some convenient travel vehicle, like a motorbike or hoverboard, though hover shoes are what I settled on in the end for, let's be honest, simplicity's sake. Also, I may or may not have been looking for a chance to draw funky modern shoes. While researching, I came across the Aino tribe, I hope I'm pronouncing that one right, which I originally wanted to use as inspiration for the design. I didn't really end up doing that since the design naturally evolved into a different direction, but the one thing that kind of stuck with me was the picture of this guy. The beard with the hair combo is such a vibe and I wanted to go with something similar. Especially because I never draw dudes with beards. A lot of people love beards, but personally I could never get behind that. I always have to think about how much food could get stuck in there. I don't know how people deal with that. Our hydrangea guy essentially got a similar cut, except it's a more modern undercut version and the beard is shorter. The undercut actually has another hydrangea shape cut into it, which makes it look more futuristic. Also, I kind of like the fact that the bundle of hydrangeas at the top looks like a man bun. And I guess I could also have made the beard to be actually out of hydrangeas as well. But I felt a natural beard with some hydrangeas in it would look better. I think the overall shapes of the design really started coming together once I did the line art. It looks very coherent and I really like that I went with the hydrangea petal shapes in the design. I already basically knew what I wanted the colors for this one to look like because my favorite kind of hydrangea to look at are the ones that turn from light green to purple as they bloom. And then I debated whether I should shade the drawing for this video or not and eventually caved in because I felt like the end results wouldn't be interesting enough if I didn't. Even though I know that you guys probably wouldn't mind. But just out of curiosity, if I did more of these design videos, would you rather have me shade the characters I design or would you prefer if I stopped after the flat colors but maybe designed a couple of extra characters? Let me know. 
The second character is actually not one I made up from scratch. I asked you guys on Twitter to send in your characters for me to give them a new outfit. And I might do it again in the future, so follow my Twitter if you haven't already. Karen is a very cool person who I've been following for a while, and she sent in her character telling me about this headcanon she had for a dystopian alternate universe. Basically, she imagined her character living in a ruined city that was overrun by flowers, and I love this concept. She said one of her favorite flowers are lupines, which look super interesting as well. And there's purple ones that I am totally not biased towards. I found out that lupine leaves are apparently very water repellent, and that's where I got the idea that she could be making raincoats out of lupine leaves. Maybe the area she lives in is very rain heavy, so raincoats are necessary to survival there, but at the same time, the rain makes the plants there flourish. She could be one of the last people in the city, rebuilding it from ruins using the materials she can find. Honestly, I like the idea that she could end up meeting the Hydrangea tribe, since they do travel different planets and try to help everyone. They could be delivering newer technology to her planet, since much of it must have been destroyed. Her outfit is also very much based on the heavy rain concepts. I struggled a lot trying to give her a raincoat while making it look futuristic, not gonna lie. I do think I came up with an interesting concept in the end, having a separated top and bottom part with some loose, see-through parts on top of it. She also has a bag to carry materials like lupines in. For her design, I didn't want to incorporate the flowers into her outfit like I did with the hydrangea one, but make it more subtle. So I ended up giving her this skin-tight suit and leg straps, which are meant to look like lupines starting to bloom. A problem I realized I had while making these designs was that I tend to always slap some sort of belt around the character's waist, and so I deliberately thought about how to avoid that here. I ended up attaching the leg strap thingies directly to her suit instead of adding a belt. Again. The leg straps also have to hold up her over knee rain boots, which she would need to wade through flooded streets. Ironically, as I'm recording this, it is the day after a storm that swiped over Germany and ended up flooding several cities. So I'm kind of currently feeling that vibe. During the liner stage, I added some cyberpunk-esque features to her horns and also gave her a mechanical leg, since as far as I know, she is some form of robot or cyborg. Don't take my word for this, I am not sure. And maybe some of her leg parts got lost while disaster struck this planet. Obviously, any lore I state here is just my headcanon. If Karen likes this, she can totally steal it, but it's up to her to decide. I drop in the flat colors, and unfortunately, I lied. I am very biased, so we have another purple-green color scheme. While shading, I noticed that her jacket being green actually really bugged me. It just didn't really look right, and so I changed it to gray which, in my opinion, makes the design a lot more coherent, and also fits Karen's vibe more. I think this design came out really cute. I hope Karen likes it too. And speaking of liking, if you like what I do, let me know by liking the video. I'd be happy to design some more characters in the future if you guys want me to. But we are not done yet. There's one more flower that is destined to become a character. The Red Spider Lily. I'm sure you've all seen this flower because it's been used in like 50 anime. It's absolutely beautiful too, so I was excited to work on this one. The first idea that came to my mind was actually very visual. A lanky but elegant androgynous person in a long dress. I very roughly sketched out the silhouette I had in mind, and started struggling as it came to putting down the clothing I had in my head. Sometimes you know exactly what you want to draw, but you just can't draw it for whatever reason. I wanted to go with an open kimono jacket type of garment and another body tight suit. Honestly, maybe this whole episode is actually about bodysuits and not flowers. This bodysuit was supposed to look more mechanical though, as if it's solid and partially integrated into this person's body. I settle on a spider lily as top that barely covers anything because I wanted the bodysuit to be visible underneath. 
Their hair is also meant to look like spider lily petals and give them this mermaid dress silhouette without them actually wearing a mermaid dress. I'm a genius, I know. This character gives me royalty vibes, maybe they're a high-ranking royal in their society. I imagine that under that cool facade they carry a lot of burdens with them. Despite them looking elegant and frail, I like the idea that they had battle training since they were young and can totally kick your butt. The other characters I designed had an easy threat to connect them to one another, and I was thinking about how the spider lily could play into that as well. They could be an opposing force to the Hydrangea tribe. Maybe they disagree with the notion of meddling in other planets' affairs. Maybe they're trying to uphold a universal balance, which to them means that if a species dies or ruins its planet, it was meant to happen, and interfering would be tipping the scale and upsetting the balance. But as always, if you guys have any interesting ideas, tell me about them. I fleshed out a lot of details on their bodysuit during the liner stage, and I really love how it's been coming along. For the colors, obviously I couldn't skip out on the iconic red. Because the red is so strong, I held back on other colors and made their bodysuit mainly grey with some yellowish lights here and there. Honestly, I think you can barely see them from afar. They also have red markings on their skin, just because it looks cool. But who knows, maybe it's actually some kind of theme line. Once all that was done, I added some rough shading. And here they are! Who's your favorite one? I think mine has to be the spider lily one, just because their design turned out so iconic. Let me know your ideas for future design videos, if you have any. Also, just a heads up, I might be opening my commission soon. So if you want to commission me for art or designs, or whatever else, be sure to join my Discord. That's pretty much the only place you're guaranteed to be notified whenever my commissions open. Alright, that's it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. Will out.